So, hello everyone, and today we are going to talk about passwords. And in this session, I'm going to show you what are the steps required to crack a nested password and to retrieve its plain test. Because, well, we we all know that uh, when we have a leak of the database uh, user details, it's a bad thing. But from uh, from obtaining an asset password to actually use this information, well, there is a journey in between, so it's not so easy to, to retrieve. And I wanted to do this session just to illustrate to you which are the steps you have to take to retrieve the original password. I'm going to use the LinkedIn dump. If you remember in 2016, there LinkedIn suffered another password uh, leaking. So uh, I just extracted a random sample from this uh, original dump and then I show you how you can retrieve almost all of them. So before starting, let's before starting let's talk about what is an hash. An hash is according to Wikipedia definition, it is our source of information, is a, a, a function that maps an arbitrary amount of data to a fixed amount of data. What does it mean? It means that if I have uh, an algorithm, maybe MD5, just for example, there are several, we'll, so we'll see them later, I can just feed it with a string, a stream of uh, binary data, a file, something, and I will always retrieve uh, a string that is, in this case, long 32 charts. So there are different types of hashes, and the main difference that we can find is they have a built-in hash or not, or better phrase it, if the function that they are using is keyed or unkeyed. What does it mean in practical terms? It means that, for example, if I have my password string and I feed it to the MD5 function, every time I'm invoking this function, the output will be the same, as you can see. And as you can see, the hash is always the same. If we are using another uh, function, for example, bcrypt in this, this example, Example, as you can see, every time I'm using this kind of algorithm, the output is different. So, and this is really, really important when we are talking about passwords because uh, algorithms as MD5 are really good for data checks to integrity checks because I can just publish my hash on a site and tell people, okay, when you download this file please check that the hash is the same that I'm publishing on my site. If they match, we are well, pretty confident that this file wasn't corrupted. But if you are using that for a password, this is terrible, and we will see later. So, let's get in, into the business. How to crack a password? Well, first of all, don't. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it seems something stupid, but it doesn't. It's not so stupid because you can just Google it. Let's say we have an MD5 hash that you have found somewhere. Since every, so we saw before, if you use a, a function, an algorithm, an hash function that doesn't have a key, Basically, every time you're using the same password, you have the same uh, output, the same hash. And there are sites that are just simply publishing these hashes, so you can just Google it. There's no time. This is the hash for the password, for, um, for a string password. As you can see, you can simply find it online. Other solutions are recovering using online tools. There are sites, for example, ashes.org, that have a search page. You can just give him a list of hashes, and since they have a database that is quite large, you can just ask him to retrieve the plain text. Actually, uh, hashes.org is <clears throat> quite clever because he, he even can crack or display the results for 
salted hashes. So this is kudos for them. Another result is hkiller.co.uk. They have online tools too, so you can just search for this kind of um, for, for the hashes but they have a kicker because they have a forum where you can just ask for help this is a free session a uh, free section uh, there's just register and since they are people that are cracking passwords for fun uh, you can just tell them okay i have this large list of hashes this is the algorithm hey can you please help me and people will help you you can Sometimes you can just recover the 60-70% of your hashes and this is pretty much impressive because you just did nothing, you just have to wait maybe a couple of days and you can just retrieve all the plain text of the, maybe the easy ones of, the, of your hash list. So, but let's say you want to do it yourself. Well, there are several steps required because this is the uh, the hardest path that you can work. So there are several different tools available. These are cracking programs and there are the three most important ones are John the Ripper, MDXFine and Hashcat. We they are we are all doing the same job but in different ways and we will review them later. <coughs> but before starting we have to pre-process the hashes. What does it mean? It means that all, almost cracking programs, they accept an, an input that is defined with punish for line. Okay, this is pretty obvious and it makes sense. But sadly, there isn't a standard for stealing data. So you can just find them in the, the correct form. For example, this is the the starting lines of the Patreon dump. If you remember, Patreon in 2015 was hacked and the world database was published online. And this is the world database. This is what you can find. You can just, as you can see, this is the, uh, the raw database um, dump. There are all the SQL instructions to recreate the database. You can just feed it to the cracking program. You have to extract the hashes. Sometimes we are lucky and for example this is the LinkedIn dump and as you can see we are pretty much ready to go but in this case we can just optimize the starting hashes list and to do that we have to deal and handle these files so there is a fine warning because the files we are going to handle are huge <coughs> And not saying huge, well, large, they are massive. For example, the LinkedIn dump is four, four and a half gigabytes. Uh, Patreon, that we saw before, is 14 gigabytes. Uh, MySpace, that was released uh, some time ago, is 33 gigabytes. It's a single text file that is larger than 30 gigabytes. So, you can just think about using a text editor just to uh, interact mm -hmm. with them. You have to use the console. So it's time for bash. Yeah, there are, uh, so this means you have to use Linux or at least Windows use Linux tools. So there are some useful tools, this changes from case to case, but this is just a short list of useful function tools that you can use. The first one is less dash capital S. This is, well, om almost of you most likely uh, already knew, already know these kind of tools, but let's recap them quickly. As I was saying, less dash capital S is useful when you want to scan the contents of the file. Uh, again, this is useful because maybe you are inter working on a 10 gigabytes file, so you can just cat everything and head is used to print only the first lines of the of the file the first one sysplit is a really interesting and useful command because sometimes like we saw in patreon you have a single file contains all your database but you're not interested to the world contents of the of the original site you just want the hashes extracted from the member table 
Using C-split with this kind of regular expression, we just split the original file into several, several different files, one for each table. So you can just delete the files that you don't, uh, you are not interested into, and just focus on the interested one. Sort a unique uh, commands, I use it to remove duplicates from your hash list. So, for example, let's make it. We are going to work on the LinkedIn dump because it's well, pretty uh, ready to go. As you can see, and uh, the wall, the original dump has more than one hundred. Yeah, 170 million of lines. And uh, as, as I said before, we can optimize it and we can remove duplicates. So we can sort and remove duplicates. And as you can see, we have just dropped it to 61 million of lines. Well, the, name, the number is pretty impressive, but as you can see, just shrink it to 50%. This, this is happening because LinkedIn was using the SHA1 uh, algorithm that is the same family of the MD5. So every time you use the same password, you, you uh, have the same output and it wasn't using assault. So basically we were able to just remove 50% of the hashes and just focus on the new unique hashes. When we stop, when we complete our work, we can just uh, link the, the password, the plain test to the hashes and get inside the, the account of our users. So, crack time. Uh, but how? I mean, we saw several different programs before. Let's review, well, review them. We have uh, different tools. We have to choose the right one for the job. The first one is John the Ripper. This is really straightforward because, well, just give him the hash list and he's, he's clever enough to uh, understand the hash algorithm and do all the magic for you. Sadly, uh, it only supports the most common algorithm. If you, if you have something strange, you have to use the community bids. And it doesn't support your graphic card. It can use the power of your graphic card it only runs on your CPU. If you want to use your GPU, you have to build from source, to, you have to compile it from source. Well, it's quite a bummer. Another one is MDX Find. This is CPU only, so you don't have to bother about uh, building. And this is interesting because it's very effective when you have several millions of hashes scattered among different files. He is clever enough to just crack the, the hash and remove from a correct file. So it's interesting, but it's really interesting because it supports weird algorithm. I mean, there are algorithms that are just crazy. For example, people are doing MD5, MD5 reverse of the original password. I don't know why, but sometimes happens. And finally, this is what we are going to use, Hashcat. Hashcat, because it's fast, it's quite re reliable. It works both on GPU and CPU. You don't have to think about it. It just understands which devices are very connected. So you don't have to bother. And it's really, really fast. So finally, let's see how we can attack our, our, uh, our hash list. There are several types of attacks. And we have brute force, mask attack, and dictionary attack. Well, brute force is the dumb attack because you are just trying all the possible combinations for your password. You just start with uh, uh, a chart list and just try all the possible combinations. This is very effective because you are just trying everything you can do, but there is a problem, the password length, because when it becomes very long, you can just take, it takes days to complete uh, a sequence. So. It's, you can just you, you can use it only when you're trying to guess short passwords. Then we have mask attack. Mask attack basically it's a clever brute force attack because you are supplying to Hashcat a mask. We will see later what what it is, and we are telling Hashcat to not try every possible combination of charts, but a subset. For example, only lower cases, only upper cases, only digits. So we can just 
reduce our key space, our all possible candidates, and the trade-off is that we can just try to crack longer passwords. We'll see later actually what does it mean. Finally, we have the dictionary attack. The dictionary attack, basically, we have a list of words. We can think that maybe they could be used for as passwords. And we will try them with some variations. And we will try to uh, see if they were used as passwords. The, the main problem with dictionary attacks is that you have to find this word list because with the brute force and mask attack, you're just trying everything you can. So you don't have to provide anything. With the word list, you have to provide a file containing all the password candidates. And there are several resources online. And uh, the RockQ word list, most likely you already knew that because in 2009, the RockQ site was hacked. <laughs> and the problem was they were storing passwords in plain text. And uh, this means that in this word list, there are all used passwords. We are 100% sure that they use it, they, if the password is inside that, is, it was used at least once. Then we have a hashes.org site. If you remember, it was one of the online tools. And they weekly, they release an updated list of the cracked passwords. So you can just download it and try as a word list. Finally, you can uh, try to use the SecList repository. In this repository on GitHub, there is uh, a folder for passwords. There are several collections of passwords, of word lists. You can just pick one and try them. So finally, this is time for action. As I saw before, we are going to try our work on uh, LinkedIn dump. Uh, for the sake of this presentation, I extracted a sample of 500,000 of passwords randomly. And uh, I'm going to try different types of attacks on this text. I was, at the beginning, I was thinking about doing a live session, but it takes simply too much. No, it's not so much because uh, uh, most likely you can do everything in, well, maybe a day or an afternoon and then don't have a really fast hardware, but this is not practical for uh, a, a session. So, brute force. As I saw before, as I said before, this is the dumbest attack. It's really, really fast because if you can see, we are just trying 2,000 of million of passwords each second. So basically, we are going to try a lot of uh, combinations. This is the command that we are using. is dash a test hashcat we are going to brute force. M100 is for the type of the, the, the hashtag. The increment flag tells hashcat to start with the smallest uh, char. We, we just try to all the possible length from one to six just long. Then, well, we have the, the results. And finally, we have, you can see this. This is basically, uh, we're telling uh, Hashcat to use all possible charts to crack our password. And this is actually a pretty fast attack because I was in about five minutes I was able to remove about the 10% of my hash. Why I'm doing this? Because we saw before brute force is not so, is not the right tool when we are trying to guess all the passwords. I use it brute force because in this way I can just remove all the easy passwords, all the short passwords. There is no uh, need to try to un guess maybe um, with word, short word list or some doing ex um, strange magic. We have a short list, a short password, six charts. You can just try everything and you recover it. As you can see, there are more, uh, um, there are almost 50,000 people in my uh, sample that are using short passwords. So people are still using short passwords with of six charts long. So 
time to move to the mask attack. As I said before, brute force is just limited because you can just reach only short passwords. Let's try with the mask attack. This is the um, this is what I was saying here. You were seeing here is a mask file. Hashcat in his distribution has a folder named masks where there are several ready to use files. This is a mask file where each line contains a mask. And as you can see, basically it's an instruction that tells Hashcat to not try every possible combination, but just a subset. For example, if you take a look at the last one, okay, maybe not that, but the first one, you can see that tells Hashcat to try all the uppercase charts, followed by lowercase, lowercase, then two digits, then lowercase, another, another digit. In this way, our key space is lower because we are not trying all the possible uh, combination. We're just ruling something out and we can try to crack more passwords with this kind of tech. So this is the actual command that uh, I use it. Basically, it's the same of the, the, the previous one, but it's, it's different because now we are not going to, uh, to use a single mask, but we are going to use, uh, we are feeding a, um, a file contains all the different masks. Ashcat is quite clever because you will start trying every single entry for your, uh, inside your hash list. And again, we can see something that is really interesting because I just left it to run for a couple of hours, maybe three hours. And uh, I was able to recover about the 50% of the remaining hashes. And in numbers, it means that I was able to recover more than 200 yeah, 210,000 <coughs> passwords. And as you can see, I was able to try to guess very long passwords, that is 12 charts long. And finally, I was, the grand total is about more than 260,000 passwords cracked. So if you think about it, that this is about the 50% of my sample. You can think, well, we, are, we still have 50% of the passwords to crack, but just think about it. Here, there's no brain. I mean, this is no, there's nothing clever about this kind of attack. We just use it as cat with its default configurations, and we were able to crack about the 50% of our list, which, if you remember, is the it's just a sample of our common, of the original link they dump. This is because people are using bad passwords. This is why you should use some, a password manager or something like that. Now the, we are trying to recover more passwords. We have just finished the most simple type of attacks. We have to do something more clever. This means that it's time for a word list attack. Now the command is just a little different. The main thing that changes is this parent. This is the most important one, the R argument. We are feeding our, to Ashcat a word list and a rule, a rule file. Rules are a very interesting things because basically it's a scripting engine that uh, Ashcat uses to create variations on the, from the original word. What does it mean? It means this. This is just the first lines of uh, one root file. We can just tell uh, to Ashcat, okay, this is the original word, maybe password. Okay, first one, try to capitalize the first and lower the rest. So we have P, oh, okay and the rest lowercase then you can try to lowercase everything then uppercase everything 
and so on. We can just say there are some, these, these are the most easy and common ones, but there are some crazy combinations. For example, you can just tell Hashcat to rotate, to shift the, the original world. It doesn't have to make sense because we are just trying to, to guess. So we are just trying to get lucky, to, to be honest. So for example, you can just try to de delete a char or append a dot, append a number. You can do a really lot of things. So these are the actual results. And as you can see, things are getting harder and interesting at the same time. Because first of all, I used the RQ. I used these three types of word lists. RQ, ashes.org, and ashkiller was the list. If you remember, ashkiller.co.uk was another site with online tools. They release uh, a dump of the, of the database of passwords, so you can just use it as we did with the ashes. I use these three types of word list and apply three different types of rules because there are some differences. And I was able to crack a lot of things. I was able to crack more than 120,000 passwords. And uh, this is a smaller number with, uh, compared to the previous ones. But you have to think about that things are getting harder and harder. It's like when you are accelerating on your car. It's easy to get to 0 to 50 uh, kilometers. But it's really, really hard to get from 300 to 350 because things are getting more and more difficult. So the final result is that I was able to crack about the 80% of my passwords. This is an interesting result because, well, first of all, you have to remember you can just can't crack the 100% of your passwords because, well, Thank God, there are people that are password savior. I mean, they really use a password manager. Maybe they are using long, complicated passwords. So you can just try, just think to crack the 100% of your hash list. And usually the 17, 80% mark is a pretty decent uh, uh, job. And since we, well, we are using uh, normal hardware, there are cracking read rig where there are maybe uh, 10 GPU uh, graphic cards connected and they can achieve a uh, maximum speed but this is like uh, a speed uh, the Formula 1 car of cracking so it's really complicated to use in your, in your houses, houses but we can just try to crack more and try to uh, get past this 80% mark to do that, we have to think about uh, how the users are going to uh, pick their passwords. So you just start to think of how they choose their passwords. And there are several ways you can do that. Well, the final result is pretty obvious. You just start to uh, brute force set the length to uh, 30 charts and wait maybe two months. Well, you sure you get all the results, but we can do that. We can. What we can do is try to is try to um, get smart. For example, uh, I created a script that parses Twitter. Actually, it, it parses Twitter hashtags. Why hashtags? Because, well, first of all, hashtags are pretty long, so it just, uh, this is what we are interested in too. And people in, uh, were, um, are using uh, slang words in, uh, in their hashtags. What does it mean? It means that we can have a dictionary with all the common words in the, in, of the English word, but there are people, people use it they don't speak as the Oxford dictionary. They are going to use uh, abbreviations. They are going to use uh, maybe typos in the, in the passwords, in the words. Maybe they are using uh, uh, jokes. 
So hashtags are perfect candidates to try to understand what people are thinking. And I made a script and I made it run for a couple of hours. And then I applied it to my uh, to the sample of the of the LinkedIn list, and the results were was a bummer because I was able to crack only one. But but it's not the quantity; it's the quality. <laughs> no, really. I mean, this is what I was tr able to crack: is life is a roller coaster. I mean, this is interesting because it's a phrase. It's not a. Uh, it's it's made of several words combined. So since we are more interested in quality, I say okay, let's try again, and just run it against the wall, LinkedIn down. Maybe we are going to have more results, more interesting results. And I was able to get it, and I was able to crack about 54,000 passwords. And let's take a look at what I was able to recover and things are, are interesting because at the first column you can see the length then the original hash and then the plain test as you can see we were able to crack password longer than 20 charts well 20 charts is a really long password it's really a password phrase so you can just if you take a look at it there are another day at the office Dancing with it starts 26. I don't know why 26. And uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. And this is this is interesting. This is you can just think about it. As I said before, it's not a simple word with some variation. They are past phrases, they are phrases. So I say, well, we can just apply the same concept to create phrases. And I created another script called Phrases Generator. In this, in this script, I'm trying to uh, catch the the people that are using as passwords, uh, maybe quotes. I'm, I mean, all of us have a favorite movie, a favorite uh, uh, book, something that we really love. And sometimes people use references to this uh, to this book for the phrases so I start with the most obvious one the Bible I mean this is the Bible this is the text one I just try once just try to, to use something that is possible to find online this is the Bible I think it's pretty common text and uh, this is it's simple a text file so I created a script that Basically, packs words taken from a text. For example, uh, just you feed the script with a text and tell him to use a different amount of words, maybe four, five, six, and it basically it creates a sliding window over the text and just creates password candidates using the words. For example, I the first one is the the password the candidates created with four words but as you can see there is in the beginning god then the beginning god created as so, as i said before it's a sliding window picking up words uh, that i choose the length the number the amount of words i chose before and again this time i made it run again against the word linkedin dump and things are really interesting because, well, I was able just to crack 5,000 passwords. Again, it's not the quantity, but the quality. Because you have to add, well, not everyone is using the Bible as reference for the passwords. But was, the results are amazing. I mean, I, I really didn't expect that, but there are people that choose a password that is long 27 charts fearfully and wonderful mate I mean good luck to do for that or maybe there are just crisis lord with upper cases and uh, spaces uh, all the things so this is really interesting because you can just try 
obviously you have to try to um, to use the right text on the context because just for fun I tried to use the same uh, the same password list candidates list um, against the Ashley Madison dump or well, I don't know if you remember that yeah he knows what it means <laughs> Ashley Madison was a site I don't know if they are still in business but it's a site for uh, yeah uh, for uh, um, affairs when you just want to find someone to well, go out uh, to cheat your wife or cheat your uh, your husband the people went to that site and sign up and meet each other I tried to use the same result uh, the same text uh, using the Bible and obviously I got no uh, no it because <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why but so uh, you can see uh, for example you can see a lot of profanity as password <laughs> so uh, this is why I chose LinkedIn dump because well it's it's even, uh, just a slight better to put in a session so to, to recap the we are at the end of our session we start as you can see there is a journey when you try to crack your passwords because you just start with the fastest dumbest attacks that is brute force there is no logic at all involved but uh, things are easy then you have to start to get creative and you can find something more interesting but if you really want to crack everything well you really have to start to think about out of the box because you have to try to understand what people could use <coughs> as password okay. thank you very much We have some time. Some, if anyone wants a question? Well, thank you because I have another set. No, sorry, too late. I have another session <laughs> in 10 minutes in another room. So you can just follow me and ask me in <laughs> 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, but I have to go there. <laughs> <laughs>